If you want to be a successful food photographer or blogger who is actually earning money instead of just photographing in exchange for product, you cannot just be reliant on Instagram to find your clients. Instagram is actually dying. Let me tell you why and what you should be doing instead. Now, the first reason why you shouldn't just be relying on Instagram as a photographer is because you need to be a content making machine in order to be successful on Instagram these days. The Instagram algorithm values volume, recency, as well as consistency. And that means that in order for your ideal clients to find you or for your current followers and clients to even see your photos, you need to be posting at least once a day, if not more. And you need to be doing this on a consistent basis. Anytime you take a break from Instagram, the algorithm works in a way that you are forgotten. You get penalized and you get pushed down to the bottom of the pile. Now, back in 2019 and even 2020, you could see good growth on your Instagram account by just posting still photos two to three times a week. But nowadays, in order to grow your following, in order to be seen and in order to be found, I'm actually seeing a lot of creators and photographers having to post every single day and sometimes multiple times a day and not just still photos, but reels as well. Now, as a creative, such as a photographer like us, this is really concerning because producing quality content takes time. And if we're producing so much content, this is going to lead to burnout and a reduction in quality. So it's simply not feasible to create quality food photos like a machine every single day. Now, on the other hand, if we don't do this, we're not going to see growth and our ideal clients are not going to find us. So what can you do as a photographer instead? Now, personally, I've shifted my Instagram content strategy where I'm actually repurposing a lot of content from different platforms. So let me explain. For example, I will produce one long form content like this video, and then I actually chop this video up into smaller short form content to be repurposed as reels on Instagram. Now, as a food photographer, you likely don't have a YouTube account. So what you can do instead is take a day's shoot that you're doing for a client or for your blog. And for every single final shot that you take, make a quick five second behind the scenes video like this. And then all you do is stick a photo at the end of it. You can now use this as a reel on Instagram. So for me personally, from one YouTube video, I can actually make five to 10 shorter reels. Now, if I'm actually doing a shoot for a client, I can actually make up to 10 reels depending on what the deliverables are. So if I've got 10 final shots, I'm actually going to convert those final shots into 10 reels. And when I post these reels to Instagram, I'm able to then grow my account be found by ideal clients and grow my following because Instagram will push out those reels to new followers. Now, what this means is you're not actually creating new content specifically for Instagram. You're actually just using something from your daily shoots that you do for your clients or your blog and repurposing. Repurposing is the name of the game. Now, if you actually want to take this one step further, you can then take the very same reel that you just created and further repurpose it on platforms such as TikTok or even YouTube Shorts. And that is exactly what I did recently, where I took the reel I had created on Instagram and I actually put it on my YouTube Shorts as an experiment. I was actually able to get thousands upon thousands of views and hundreds of new followers without actually creating any new content. I've also seen fellow photographers do just the same, such as Keegan Evans. Now, he has blown up on YouTube. If you look at his YouTube channel, all he publishes are YouTube shorts, and he's grown a substantial following in a very short period of time. So what he does is he repurposes this across other social media platforms, just like Instagram as well as TikTok. So really, he's only making one piece of content and then he's distributing this across multiple social media platforms. And this has allowed him to work with clients such as V Flat World, Adidas, as well as Oreo Cookie. And all of this started out with YouTube Shorts. So don't think that Instagram is the only way for you to find paying clients. Think outside the box and start repurposing your content on other platforms. So to sum up, the moral of this tip is to take one long form content piece, such as a blog post, a shoot or a YouTube video, and then create shorter form content pieces from that, such as reels. And then the second part of that is to then repurpose those across multiple platforms, such as YouTube shorts and TikTok, and not just rely on Instagram. 
Now, the next reason why I'm suggesting you don't just put all your eggs in the Instagram basket is that you're not future proofing your business for the next generation of clients. Now, have a look at this survey where teenagers were told to see what social media platform they're using the most. Now, from the survey, you can see that the popularity of Facebook has actually decreased significantly and has almost died as a platform. Now, say you were a photographer who maybe five years ago was just relying on Facebook or Facebook ads to get clients. At this time, this would be a problem for you because had you not diversified your platforms, Facebook is currently dead and you wouldn't be getting any new clients. Now, on the other hand, have a look at TikTok. Amongst teenagers, TikTok has actually surpassed both Instagram and Snapchat as a social media platform, even though it is the newest kid on the block. Now, the third main point you can take away from this survey is that the growth of Instagram has also slowed down in the last few years. And lastly, have a look at YouTube. Over the years, this platform has actually stayed super consistent amongst its popularity. So what does all this mean for you as a food photographer? Well, number one, trends change. Social media platforms come, they go, some may die out altogether. So if you wanna be really savvy as a photographer when it comes to your marketing, then shift your followers from your social media platform to a platform that you own and you control. So that would be either a blog or an email list. Now, both of these are platforms that you are in charge of and you're not a slave to an algorithm. It's really up to you how often you publish a blog post, how often you email your client list, and it's up to you what keywords you want to be found for on your blog as well. And that will directly relate to your AdSense revenue that you make on the blog as well. And number two, even if you think you don't want to be on TikTok, even if you think you don't want to be producing YouTube shorts, really those are two platforms that are number one, growing like TikTok, or number two, staying consistent across the board. So all of those people that took the survey that are teens right now, likely they're gonna be your clients in the next few years. Now, speaking of being savvy as a food photography marketer, before I go on to the next reason why Instagram is dying and why you should be diversifying your content strategy, if you wanna learn more about the marketing techniques I'm using in my own food photography business that isn't just reliant on Instagram, then check out the link in bio for my free masterclass. I'm actually going through eight marketing techniques that I use in my own six-figure food photography business. The mistakes I'm seeing commonly made by food photographers that result in flat photos and lost business, as well as my complete cold pitch email process that converts like gangbusters. So click the link in bio to register and learn the ins and outs of a six-figure food photography business. Okay, on to the next reason why Instagram is dying and you need to diversify your marketing as a food photographer, and that is because Instagram has lost its identity. Now, unless you're living under a rock in the mountains, you've probably noticed that Instagram is trying to copy TikTok in so many ways, probably because they're actually feeling threatened by this platform. The survey that I showed you earlier clearly shows that within a very short time frame, TikTok has actually surpassed Instagram in terms of popularity, despite being such a new platform. So to counteract this, Instagram has made numerous changes to its own platform as well as its algorithm in order to keep up. Now, this has really upset content creators, especially photographers, to the point that Instagram is now not even recognizable as the original social media platform it started off as. Some of these changes include pushing a video, pushing out reels, pushing out a lot more sponsored content. Now, when you look at social media platforms as a whole, you'll see that YouTube is clearly known as a platform for long form videos. When you look at TikTok, this is a platform you kind of go to for fast short form videos. Now in the past, Instagram was actually known as a platform to share your still photos with those that follow you. However, when you're logging into Instagram these days, you'll notice that A, you no longer actually see still photographs and your feed is filled with reels. And B, you're no longer actually seeing content from people that you choose to follow. Either you're seeing posts from recommended users or a lot of ads and sponsored posts. The other day, I was actually going through my own feed and literally every third post was an advert. And that's the reason why Instagram is slowly losing its popularity, not just amongst photographers, but most content creators in general. Okay, so at this point in the video, are you totally freaking out and thinking, Sukena, does this mean I shouldn't even be on Instagram? 
No, absolutely not. All I'm saying is that I as a photographer have limited time and so do you. So really we should be using that time efficiently. So at this stage, if you are on Instagram, then this is what I'd be doing to leverage the platform. Number one, I would consistently post reels that lead to a still photograph to show my authority as a photographer. Reels are gonna reach a much larger audience and will attract a new following, whether you're trying to attract clients with behind the scenes, or maybe you're just trying to attract the right community of like-minded individuals to grow that community of followers so you can start to work as an influencer with brands. Number two, I would also be leveraging other aspects of Instagram, such as stories, to nurture my clients so they start to like me, they start to trust me. I'd also be getting into the DMs to get to know my clients. I'd be using swipe up links and links in bios to take my clients and my followers off the platform and onto my email list and onto my portfolio, as well as booking a discovery call with me via a swipe up Calendly link. But at the same time, Please take this video as a warning to photographers, to creators, to not solely rely on Instagram, but to repurpose their content as well as diversify their marketing strategies in order to stay relevant and to keep booking in food photography clients. Now, if you don't already have off-platform assets, such as a blog, an email list, or a portfolio, or other social media platforms, such as YouTube Shorts or TikTok, so that you can future-proof your photography business. And since we're on the subject of Instagram as well as Reels, if you want to know how you can strategically start using Reels as a food blogger or a food photographer, I've got tons of Reel ideas that's going to help you attract potential clients and grow your revenue as a photographer as well as your community on Instagram. So click over here, check out this video because I'm sharing some really easy and actionable tips to start creating Reels and reaching a wider audience as a photographer. I'll catch you there.